Here are the watercolour brushes that I've selected for this painting. We shan't need very many. An oval mop for doing the main washes. Two small round brushes for doing smaller washes and details. We'll need to do some masking on this painting. And here's my favourite one, the Pebillo, because you can see what you're doing with it afterwards. Then with the clay shape, you can see I apply it to the light areas that I want of the painting. To areas that I want to either be white later, or that I want to put a colour over that needs the white paper to remain nice and bright. Here, the hair, for instance, where I'm going to have it very pale yellow coming into whites. And here's the finished mask painting. You can see now that the liquid's gone dry, it's gone to a dark grey. Now the paints that I'm going to use. Here's my full palette of paints, all you're going to need for doing nearly every watercolour. Now I'll show you them on a slightly larger scale so you can see exactly what the words are and which colours you might want to buy for yourself. Well, our masking fluid is now dried, so we're ready to make a start on this watercolour. What you want to paint fairly loosely, what we're going to do first is just paint in the indications of some of these arches and let those dry off a bit so we can put a quick wash over the top and hopefully the staining will just remain in the paper to just indicate those arches behind. I don't want to make too much of them. And then we'll be able to have a very loose wash in the background, the whole thing. I'm going to do work done across her, leaving some of these lighter areas behind. We're going to start with some Prussian blue, a little bit of cobalt here, and then we'll work through some uh, aureolian yellows in the background, into some warmer ochres and a little bit of um, rose as well. First thing I've got to do in that case is wet the paints, ready for use, because I'm using liquid paints from tubes, and I use them in these palettes, which makes them a bit like pan colours, in other words little blocks, and they dry off, and I can reuse them and top them up as I want, and with the colours I want, where I want them, when I want them. So just run round all the colours, just dropping a bit of water on, ready for use. There we are, that's ready to go. Put that brush back there. And I'm going to want a rigger brush for this job, I think. And this is a rigger brush. Now a rigger brush is this long thin one that in the old days was used for painting rigging on sailing boats. And you would have a, a wet oil paint base and you would then paint from this brush into the wet oil paint and it would close in behind it leaving an even thinner line. They're a very long brush that holds quite a lot of water. I'm going to mix up some of the paint that I want first with a stiffer brush so I don't mess up my, my rigger. In this case I'm going to be wanting some quite dark blue a bit of Prussian. So I'm using my Prussian and a tad of gold to that just to make it a very deep and dark green. There we go. Now if I come back to my rigger now with a bit of luck we'll have a dark enough colour and we should just be able to drop that in. I'm going to go carefully here. I'm going to rest my fingers on there lightly. There we go. Don't be too fancy with it, just chop it in in one stroke.
you see how it gives a, a lovely effect over that um, white straight away. I've got to go down to my rose and just let the rose come into it a little. And it'll mix it on the paper for me. For me. The stronger colours underneath to really bring out the colour. And there's our loose watercolour, tightened up at the end, just to give that little extra. And we'll just finish off some of these little filigrees down to the dress here, I reckon. Bring it forward a fraction here so we've got the light linking it together but we do just want to bring some of the shaping out a little more. Two little dark, darks against lights just to bring out the form. That'll do it.